Hey everybody, it's Eric and Roy. Thanks for checking out another Hatchet Cat episode. Cat, 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 Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another episode with Eric and Roy. And today we're going to be talking about holsters. What should you consider? What do I get? Concealed carry versus battle belt holsters. What do I do? Um, I don't think there's a disclaimer for this, is there? Um, well, yeah. Um, we are Safari Land. Oh, yeah. 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 We're yeah. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, Safari. Sorry. <laughs> safari Land. Yeah. What are we? Um, Affiliates. Affiliates. Yeah, we're part of their core program. So yeah, if you want to save program. some money, go check out the discount code with Safari Land and also Traditional Arms. Yes. They are a local company Correct. here in Florida. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So both of those guys, right? Yeah. That's our disclaimer. Uh, Traditional Arms, great company. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll we'll obviously show you guys their holsters. They provide our EDC concealed carry holsters for mm -hmm. us, and they also build a uh, outside the waistband holster for us. Yep. And then Safari Land is so gracious. To help us out mm -hmm. with our battle belt duty holsters, so proven, proven. Yep. Both companies are great, by the way. Um, fantastic. Great. I've been awesome. buying their product. Yeah. Well before we ever became core members, core members, affiliates, yeah. ambassadors. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, and also comment below. We're going to kind of do a lot more engagement with you guys with these videos so that way we can kind of push the conversation so everybody can kind of benefit from your knowledge. Uh, your knowledge. Yeah. Share your knowledge. Um, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about the importance of holsters. Um, I, we feel like it's one of those things where people kind of, especially newer gun we owners, see a they lot skim of garbage. <laughs> a we lot. See, we, see, we teach a lot of classes. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are on the range quite often. And unfortunately, not everyone is necessarily equipped properly when it comes to their holster and their holster choicement. Their choicement. Hol choicement. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I just ate a whole bunch of saltine crackers <laughs> with locally raw honey on it. <laughs> locally raw honey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the importance of holsters, holster types, and then also some breakdowns on those types, what to stay away from, and then also a little bit about battle belts and... Uh, how we run holsters. Um, yeah. Holster setup, right? Yeah. But just... importance of holsters, as you were saying. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously to hold a gun, right? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty important. Uh, it's pretty important. Yeah, we, I feel like what we've seen on the range in classes is we've seen where a holster seems like you bought a gun and it's kind of an afterthought. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, it came with the package. Correct. You know, like, Wait, ah, we... I'll throw this in there. Yeah, Springfield was really well known for that. Uh, yeah. Everyone, but... There was a time when, when obviously the grip zone days. The grip zone days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh gosh. my gosh! Oh, you had to tell people where your where your grip zone. Where your grip zone yeah. was. Yeah. All right, the grip zone days. Um, actually, prior even prior to mm. that, the XDM days, where Springfield did entire packages where they came with um, mag pouches. And also a holster. Yeah. And man, have I seen so many of those. Um, that's what we're talking about. That's yeah. obviously atrocious. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Don't run that. Um, looking for, you know, um, a holster that has solid retention mm. to it. Uh, maybe something that has some type of active retention, potentially, based on if you're an outside the waistband, battle belt setup. Yeah. Um, something that doesn't have snag points on it. Yeah. So that, that's a that's a key. We see that quite often, especially in EDC holsters. Yeah. Meaning snag points would be we see leather holsters, but we also see hybrid holsters where they're part kydex and then they have some type of uh, neoprene nylon backing to them. Excuse me. <laughs> Ritz cracker. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, or or like a, like a leather backing mm. to it. Okay. Um, which there are some quality ones out there that are hybrid holster where they're kind of kydex and leather or kydex and neoprene, but Making sure that um, 
understanding that there's a little bit more maintenance in that. Mm. And as that soft material, more pliable material, um, if it starts to break down, how that can be unsafe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So. I think the one thing is a holster should, for me, is something that I like, <clears throat> I will base a gun purchase off of a holster. Like if I'm gonna switch families to like, like for example, I was switching from, we almost switched to Beretta when we were switching families and we didn't have Actually, any looked at, I looked at two different, uh, so Beretta and then also I was looking at doing the Walther PDP. Yeah. And my biggest choice behind not going to the Walther PDP was is that there was not a holster that was specifically designed for that mm. by Safari Land. I had to take like a SIG 320 holster and have it modified to fit it. Yeah. Okay. Um, which you know um, is fine. I did it actually. I modified mm -hmm. it. A SIG, um, modified it. Yeah. Modified and I it. Not talk, guys. <laughs> it's all them crackers. <laughs> it's all them crackers. Yeah. So. I usually only mess up words about 600 times in a video, <laughs> so today's going to be about 800. <laughs> so, and we're leaving all my, of it in. It's my plant city education coming yeah. through. <laughs> yeah. But uh, finding a holster that is that is specifically made for the gun, uh, yeah. same thing goes when the Beretta uh, couldn't get a Safari Land holster. Uh, myself and Eric, we definitely live and die by the Safari Land holster. Yeah. Uh, if you like something different, then you know you do you. But the Safari Land ALS. Holsters mm -hmm. are definitely uh, our jam. That's what we prefer to have. They have not really failed us. And then if we ever had any kind of fail points, they are very easy to rebuild. Yeah. And when I say like, you know, um, of, of something fa failing or breaking in it, like a spring breaking off in their ALS retention or something yeah. like that, Safari Land is always on point to fix that for yeah. us. They, they have always taken care of us, regardless if we were, you know, core members or, um, you know, um, Actually, before that, we, we were, you know, we were just shooters. We had the springs break, and they sent us a packet, of, like six. Now that being said, when this, when when they did break, that was we're talking thousands years of rounds. away, yeah, <laughs> years thousands of, of draws, yeah. and thousands of draws. Um, so Safari Land, obviously, making a fantastic retention holster. Uh, so that's that's something that we look for um, is basing it off of okay, like could I get a holster for that? Yeah. And who did I have to go to to get that holster? Yeah. Is it a real reputable company? Does that company build good quality stuff? Yeah. So. The holster choice, it, it, importance of holsters, it should drive mm -hmm. how you how you your buying decision as as far as your guns, and it does for us. Um, and holsters are very important. It, it's the one thing, if you have a, a negligent discharge, it's usually holster driven. Yeah, whether a lot it's, of times it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether it's improper use of the holster, whether it's improper reholstering, whether it's the holster failing and, and going to the trigger well, something causing that. So you carry that thing, you know, to make sure that the gun stays secured and safe. So it's, it should be super important. Um, but there's different types of holsters. We have a concealed carry holsters, your duty holster, which is like your, what I was talking about, your outside the waistband. And then also um, within the CCW and even the duty, you have retention holsters. So the duty has a locking mechanism or some sort of, like you said, active retention where it locks it in there. And then the retention is just like a, like a screw, right? So like just has something to put pressure on the gun or around the trigger guard to prevent that from coming out. Um, well, let's talk about real quick concealed carry holsters. What are some things you kind of talked about a little bit already? Some, you know, whether I'm carrying from appendix or like a four o'clock position, what are some mm -hmm. things I want to consider with that? A, um, a, a lot of holsters can be a little bit universal when it comes to maybe position on your body, mm -hmm. okay? Based on do the, do, do your retention clips that hold onto your waistline, onto your belt, are they adjustable? So that's one of the things that I look for. Uh, for me, I do carry appendix. I've carried appendix for quite some time now. So I tend to look for a holster that has my clips, if I'm running something that is doubled um, here, that they're relatively evenly spaced and also height. That way the gun sits straight up and down yeah. uh, with no canting to it from the appendix area. I had that when I ran a single clip uh, concealment holster from some gun shop I bought this years ago and it would constantly tilt and yep. it was just super annoying. I had to tighten my belt down super tight yep. to prevent it from tilting so the double clip is nice. Yep. Double click, clip is nice. Um, so A, does that manufacturer that you're buying from, do they have some adjustability uh, to, to add to the cant um, or 
the other thing would be to add, uh, change your height as far as your ride height. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for myself, whenever I get a brand new holster, uh, this happens to be a traditional arms for the MMP 2.0 compact. Um, one of the things that I will do is I will set my screws where I think that they need to be, wear the holster probably around for a few days, feel where those adjustments need to be made as far as that ride height. Yeah. And then come back, make those adjustments, wear it again, make sure it feels comfortable. And then once I'm done with that, then I'll turn around and I'll remove one screw at a time so I don't lose my position on it or I'll mark my position with a marker or a pen or something mm -hmm. like that. And then I'll actually put some Loctite on those screws mm. and then I'll lock them into place so they don't move on me. Yeah. Uh, for me, one of the things that I look for is also does the manufacturer also some type of um, like claw okay uh to it what that does is it helps retain the gun closer the butt of the gun the grip of the gun closer to my body so it forces the grip of the gun up against my body do they have that do they offer that mm. so that's one of the things i look for um i generally speaking will always get a holster that has it i do prefer it it makes uh it makes concealed carry a little bit easier so you don't sh like print so i don't print quite as much so one of the things and then their quality of their kydex yeah you know what what kind of kydex are they using um do they have choices for you know removal of the sweat guard um mm -hmm. uh, or the height for the sweat guard the sweat guard is obviously going to be the part that kind of comes up against your body and how high does that ride up, yeah okay um do they have those selections and then last but not least um well, not really, last but not least, but we talked about it a minute ago, is those snag points, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that that holster fits properly in there, that there's nothing going to hang up around, or in or around the trigger guard. Yeah. And then last but not least um, would be, what is their, you know, what is their turnaround time? How fast, you know, can yeah, I get a holster a big, from yeah. them? Um, most companies uh, that build good quality holsters are probably at least gonna have a few weeks on a turnaround time because um, you know um, they put they put they put a lot of time and effort into building these. They you know they 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 polish up the edges, they clean the edges on them, so there is no snag points or yeah. sharp edges. Um, they put some love and care behind it. So, yeah. Um, they put some thought in behind it. So most companies are probably going to have a few week turnaround. So that's one of the things I consider um, if if I'm looking at a company and, and and I'm looking at getting a holster. You know, is it going to take me 12 weeks? Yeah. To get my holster. Yeah, okay. I think also the more exotic the pistol, the longer the, the wait time's gonna yeah, be. Correct. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all those points for me, it's just the exact same thing. And uh, I also like to have, if, like on this traditional arms holster, it has a little bit of an indentation outside. So if I want to, I can use my thumb to kind of press it out and pull mm -hmm. it out versus yanking it. So it kind of allows me to get leverage on the pistol and just kind of pull it out a little bit easier. Um, but it's a super awesome holster. Uh, and retains it really well. And there's a lot of great companies out there. Uh, traditional Arms, obviously, if you're in Florida, uh, local local guy, like we said earlier, um, you know, hit him up. He makes fantastic holsters. Uh, if you're looking for a really cool J-frame Kydex holster, yeah, that is his, his J-frame holster is, is really really nice. It's a great appendix carry. Um, the gun virtually just completely disappears on your body. Yeah, so, uh, fantastic holster. So I like his stuff. Uh, huge fan of it. Uh, there's a lot of other companies out there like QVO, mm -hmm. uh, Tactical. Um, there's T-Rex Arms, T -Rex arms yep. and there's side car holster i don't typically run the sidecar style with the additional what mag is the on it what's the sidecar so the sidecar would be um most everyone that is a holster builder does it nowadays from when you're talking about edc concealed carry uh that would have the additional mag pouch mm -hmm. on it um i don't typically run that if i did i would probably do um like a uh what's the small tourniquet um the small tourniquet is it snake i can't remember snake? Snake Eater? No. <laughs> uh, Comment below. You probably know. It's, yeah. a, it's a micro tourniquet. I see a lot of guys carrying that now. In There's a, probably going to be a ticker on the bottom of this video where it has the words of it populating. <laughs> yeah, <'cause> I'll... <laughs> exactly. But anyways, in the sidecar style holsters, yeah. there's a lot of guys carrying a TQ in that. Mm -hmm. Uh, or like that micro TQ yeah. um, that, that fits really, really well. So I, I have kind of, I, th I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, for me, uh, I... I I prefer just something very simple like this. Um, not a whole lot of frills to it. Yeah, just gets the job done. So. The more, the less you have, the more comfortable it usually is. I don't be. typically carry with a light either. Yeah. Um, on my ADC pistol, I always have a pocket light on me. I used to carry with a light. Yeah. My lower 
region is much happier now yeah, that I don't. So I don't, and, and I know there's a lot of micro lights out there, smaller lights that don't really take up a whole lot of extra footprint on the yeah. gun. Um, the stream light TLR 7As, you know, you know, great lights are fantastic. If you're carrying with a light and you and you're comfortable doing it, continue carrying with a light. I'm not telling you to, to not do so, but uh, I I prefer just to try to keep my EDC holster as slim line yeah. and as minimalist as I possibly can. Right. Okay? Uh, I don't want to add a whole lot of extra stuff to it. So, Well, duty. Duty holsters. Um, so duty holsters come, honestly, from like the law enforcement and the military side of things. And the, the, the prepared citizen world and the training world has really taken a strong grasp of duty holsters, and it's awesome to see. We've really um, seen it. Um, blow up, really. blow up yeah. a lot, and we've especially have seen it recently. Um, styles of and, and ranges ability of the way that you typically would train. Yeah. Okay. For for so long, uh, it's always been on a stagnant line. I mean, before you and I met, yeah, you were only running concealment. Correct. You know, exactly. for the longest time, and yep. then. Uh, started getting into shooting outside the waistband, and most of the time, those a lot of the outside this the waistband. This was actually looked down upon. Yeah. Um, this was not something that you thought about purchasing for so long mm -hmm. as a typical normal civilian. Uh, I have no military background. I have no uh, law enforcement background. I have no prior service background whatsoever. Uh, I'm just a regular dude that shoots guns a lot. So, mm -hmm. um, and that. Uh, <clears throat> this was looked down upon to, to, to even have something like this. Yeah. So like if you showed up to the range, it was like, oh, what are you trying to be? What are you trying to do? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I didn't do it. I just ran, I ran from concealment. I ran from concealment for, for basically m for the most part of my entire shooting journey. Yeah. Uh, I've probably spent the past three years yeah. running an ALS style holster. Yeah. So. And it's definitely, <clears throat> I've been, you know, running outside the waistband for a long time. Um, and the ALS, as far as duty, was the golden standard. So from the military, there was two different styles. Black Hawk Serpa, actually, surprisingly, used to be it for a long time. Yeah. Trash. Uh, Safari Land came in through, and so now that is so the let's standard. So talk, let's go back to the Black Hawk Serpa, okay? Mm -hmm. um, when we're talking about quality of holsters, um, and, and are those holsters necessarily something that potentially is even safe to carry? Everyone mm. um, probably, if you haven't seen videos on it, you, know, you can see plenty of, you can you can go and find them, or videos where people have used the Black Hawk Serpa holsters. The Serpa holsters are the ones that have the button on the side. Right where uh, the trigger Right at. where the trigger finger would go. You probably have seen people before. I've actually been in classes before where people have discharged their firearm into the ground, not necessarily into their body. I've saw one where it was in a dude's foot. Yeah, so um, surface style holsters that have those retention buttons on them. A, if you're looking for a duty holster, 100% should have retention. Yes. 100%, no doubt about it. You're wearing it outside of your body, it should have some type of level of retention. Like, a, you, like a lock or something yep, you have some, to disable. Correct, some, yeah. type of, some type of lock. If you're, honestly, personally, even if you're wearing some type of EDC holster that's outside your body, um, where you're, where you're um, openly carrying, okay, uh, you're in a constitutional carry state and you're allowed yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that you should still have some type of level of retention Absolutely. there. Uh, even if that happens to be some type of uh, shock cord mm -hmm. that goes over top of your pistol, I think you should have some type of level of retention still there. Uh, I feel like it's just a responsible thing to do. Yeah. Uh, no one wants to lose their gun. Most likely, if there is some type of active shooter or something like that, or you're involved in uh, a, an unfortunate gunfight, you're going to probably have to move, and that's where retention has come into play. If you have ever shot with us out at JTAC Ranch or anything like mm -hmm. that in our open gym sessions, um, when, when we first started open gym sessions out there, you, you had guys coming from all walks of life looking to you know venture into this style of shooting and training yeah. to because it, it was unheard of yeah you, you didn't have that ability to move and shoot and be active yeah. you know involving fitness involving moving things and, mm -hmm. and and a lot of stuff uh you didn't you didn't really have that a whole lot and we're constantly seeing guns just dump out yep. of holsters and they were nothing more the holsters were nothing more than a bucket the it gun was went into this them. on the outside of the leg, yep. on the outside of the waistband. So yep. it was just a retention screw that held that in. So yep. no locking mechanism that actually locked the gun into the holster. 
So like you were saying, like we would see them pop out all yeah, the time. Yeah, you basically just had a bucket for your gun. That's yeah, it. No, they'd climb a over a barricade or yep. whatever, and you'd see it. They'd be running, and all of a sudden you see that thing fly out. No mm -hmm. matter how tight they had it. Yep, it didn't uh, matter how tight. So, so if you're wearing an outside away sign, um, I, I think, or AKA duty, whatever you want to call it, uh, I believe that you know it should have some type of retention for in it. Uh, the ALS retention happens to be extremely nice because um, if you're an EDC guy and you're working concealment so much, like like I have done for so many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, my thumb placement behind uh, drawing my pistol out has always been typically right on top on the back part of the slide right here. My thumb has already, already been hot, nice and high. Um, it, the ALS kind of mimics the exact same thing where my, um, my thumb is going to be right here where I can, you know, kind of get to it. It's right on the back mm. of it and I kind of progress down into it. Uh, the SLS style holsters um, or you have the SLS slash ALS, where you have both levels of retention. The SLS would be the strap over the top. Yeah. That's kind of spring-loaded, you press down, the strap goes forward, and then you have the ALS, yeah. okay? That's another style. Um, I don't, unless you literally are a law enforcement officer and you're wearing that every single day, I don't necessarily think that you probably need all of that. No. Um, the normal, you know, uh, normal guy that's a concerned citizen that's looking to train, uh, looking to set their battle belt up, I think an ALS is more than sufficient for retention. Yeah. I've never lost my gun out of here. Uh, it holds no, it in. It holds I mean, it in great. The so. SLS, to your point, like <clears throat> law enforcement, a lot of guys are like, oh, well, you have a lock on here because if you get in a fight and they try to mm -hmm. take it, yeah, sure, that could be the principle of it. But what we found out is through the type of shooting, the running and gunning, when you're running around, that lock just prevents the gun from coming out. If it gets yeah. caught on a branch, if it gets caught on a barricade, it's not going to come out. You have to unlock it to be able to get that gun out. And it just prevents that thing from getting lost. It just keeps it secure. That is the purpose of the ALS and how we've seen it in its actual real world application. Um, as far as the SLS and the additional locks that you have to engage, mm -hmm. um, when we have, you know, there's cops that train with us and stuff like that in open gym or in classes, and they'll actually stage, they'll prep their, their band, mm -hmm. and then they have an ALS underneath. So right. they'll have an SLS they disengage, mm -hmm. and then they have just the ALS they have to defeat to get the gun out. So um, having the levels of retention, honestly, honestly well, ALS is perfect for if you're running gunning. If you have a, if you carry a gun for a profession like you're a law enforcement or military, even military, they're running ALS. Um, so for law enforcement, you're running probably numerous things yeah. you have to defeat, right. and that is for if you're fighting or you're scrapping and you're wrestling. Most likely, you're going to be hands on. Yes, first. you're going to be so hands on. You're going to be hands Absolutely. on first. So, um, so rightfully so, you should probably have it on there. For sure. So. One of the attachments that I highly recommend is the Safari Land Fork. So I think it's a Q QLS. 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 Yeah. So yep, it's a QLS. quick. Yep. So you can purchase the QLS mm -hmm. system. Um, um, they're a quick locking system, basically, um, where you have a male in and you also have a female in. Mm -hmm. um, and set that up on your belt makes it relatively easy to take your holster on and off. Yeah of your belt if you don't need to. I've actually seen where also people are taking the QLS system now and attaching additional med pouches yeah. to that oh. so they can run a med pouch on their belt whenever they're not running that. Maybe yeah. there's uh, a rifleman and don't really yeah. need a pistol at that particular point in time. But they're still running a battle belt set up and they can just run an additional mag, um, you know, med kit on that side, yeah. something like that. So I do like that. Going back to your EDC holsters and you know and your outside the waistband holsters, what what when you're looking for a company, are they compatible with a lot of the aftermarket right. accessories that are out there? Yeah. Um, is there ability to get different types of um, you know different types of clips? You know, can, do they do they do they set their stuff up where you know if you're the individual who wants to run a low profile invisible type clip for mm -hmm. you know you have to tuck your shirt in for work every single day right. and you need you need to be able to tuck your shirt in behind it. Um, can can you add that to your gun? Can you change that around uh, on your duty style holster? Is it a manufacturer that builds one that you can run something like the QLS? The QLS is um, probably what we see most common. Yeah. Now. Yeah. And it's actually really affordable too. Yeah. Uh, you can pick you can pick up the male and the female ends. You know, really inexpensive. Yeah. I mean, we've maybe, seen maybe like G thirty bucks. We've seen G code not very much lately, but mm -hmm. mostly QLS. And then the one other upgrade for the ALS system that Roy actually you got me onto is the nub. You want to go fast. Where you can they Even find the nub? Even if you don't want to go fast, um, the nub is just. We'll put nice. it across the bottom where you can yeah. find it. Um, no, you know, we're not, you know, not affiliates with them or anything like that. But uh, it's just a good the nub product. goes on the ALS, and it actually makes that button just a little bit larger. Yeah. I don't know why it took me so long to buy one. <laughs> 
it's I, hard to miss it. You yeah, can't it, even you, miss you, it. It's very difficult to miss it. So yeah. uh, it's it's definitely worth having on there. So I, I would highly suggest putting a nub on there. Yeah. So. No. Yeah. Um, retention. So like an outside the waistband retention holster. This is, I think, a lot of guys, like we know a lot of dudes at the ranch that do competition shooting, no. and they will run a retention holster where it just holds it in there. They're not running over obstacles, stuff like that. It's not going to be a duty holster. It's strictly for speed. Yep, exactly. Um, so it has basically the like we like like some type of screw retention. Yeah, yeah. With the rubber grommets in behind it, and you and and you adjust how hard you want that mm -hmm. to be. Okay. Yeah. Something you should look for in your EDC holster. Mm -hmm. I typically like to actually run my holster a little tighter yeah. in my EDC. Um, I want that gun to not move around inside there. I want to feel nice and safe that it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So I am run mine. I, I have to really grab my gun out yeah. very violently to, to draw it. So looking for a good retention holster. I love that sound. Listen, hold on, let's go. Oh, nice. Let me know <laughs> that I got a good fitting holster. Ready to go to work. Tight. Ready to go to work. Punch, punch out and <laughs> punch go to out work. Punch out and go to work. <laughs> punch out yeah. and go to work. So if you're running a retention holster outside the waistband, just make sure it has solid retention and also has the, like Roy was saying, the QLS adaptability to be able to mount it to your belt or whatever else that you want to run. Um, so yeah, some things, you know, with the retention holsters, making sure you have a good quality manufacturer that you're running with that has adaptability. But yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of recap as far as like some of the stuff that we uh, we kind of been rambling through here, having this conversation. A couple of things that we look for as far as staying away from to avoid. Um, one, like I said, the like the Blackhawk. Um, what are they called again? Serpa. Serpa holsters. Those style, right there. Um, I, I definitely highly suggest that you avoid those. I have physically witnessed people discharge rounds yeah. into the ground. Uh, I've taken many classes over the past probably 18, 19 years, yeah. and I've seen my handful of um, of NDs mm. with the with the Serpa holster. Now so, the Blackhawk Omni is fine, right? Yeah, the Blackhawk Omni is a fine holster. I personally haven't ran it, but I know guys that have. Yeah. Um, I know like the Alien Gear Duty holster. Oh yeah. Now, that's supposed yeah. to be a pretty solid holster too. Um, yeah. And then uh, US Duty also. Yeah, US uh, Duty. US Duty. I think that they they pretty much have like the old SLS design. Mm -hmm. Like they've taken what Safari Land. I think they actually even use the SLS. Style. Style. Yeah. It's pretty much identically the same. Cool thing about US Duty is they do make a few holsters for guns um, that you can't necessarily get through Safari Lane yeah, right like now. Yeah, like an exotic. Um, like more of an exotic pistol or something like that. Mm. Uh, they also happen to be more of that, more of that kind of like, like that bucket design. It's literally a bucket. <laughs> where they're a little more open. Yeah. They kind of more or less fit. They're, they're, they're off of your flashlight for yeah. the most part. You can run, um, and I use that actually, I have a couple of the US Duty holsters that I carry to classes with mm -hmm. me in case somebody shows up to a class with, with, with you know, an improper holster. Oh, yeah. I can set them up because I know that generally speaking, if they got an m &P or they have a Glock or they have a Beretta or a SIG 320, I can throw one of my extra X300 flashlights on the front of that the thing. The bucket's big enough. And the bucket's big enough that the gun's gonna go down in it nice yeah. and safe. So yeah. if you're looking for a good buddy holster or like, a, like for us as far as instructors, because we do get people that will show up with improper for gear mm -hmm. occasionally not very often you guys are actually really really good yeah. students we've never had a barrel and hatchet student show with improper gear yeah it, no not a barrel and hatchet student so yeah, you guys no are really barrel. good yeah but sometimes we subcontract for other classes yeah. um and uh we'll get we'll get some improper gear that show up yeah. uh you guys are actually great by the way best way to support us is to come out and train with us come see us come dude. see us yeah, yeah. Uh, come down to florida come and join us uh, I know it's a little bit of a ride, but uh, it gets really, really cold up north sometimes. <laughs> so nice. maybe come down here and, and get some sun on your yeah. pale white skin. <laughs> <laughs> Mooney. <Yeah. laughs> Freaking come train with us. Come we train got with red us. Red Dot Pistol, yeah. General Purpose, Scoop Carbine, Night Vision, medical classes. So we've the, make sure you invest in yourself. Speaking of medical classes, we're also selling TQs. Oh, yeah, we yeah. have them on the site now. Uh, TQs. Real are, ones. Uh, real ones. These are real from North American Rescue. Yeah. They will come sealed in a package like this. Yep. Uh, so if you're looking for a TQ uh, that is market priced at the typical normal thirty dollars, um, and from a reputable company, mm -hmm. um, we're not going to sell you something that's garbage that is actually from North American Rescue. And if you need something to slide that TQ into, jump on our website and also pick up a J Tactical Solutions TQ pouch. Those are probably that's probably my favorite piece of gear. Yeah, you can literally is, mount it on anything. Th the very first time that I met Eric, and we were like training together. 
and I was like looking at his kit and like I'm, I'm checking it over like I'm a, I don't know, you know, I'm like, like a really, weirdo. <laughs> like, weirdo, like really looking this guy over yeah. and I see that pouch on him. I'm like, man, what is that? Dude, that thing looks freaking cool. Yeah. And I found out it was TQ pouch. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, dude, you got to get one from these guys. Yeah. So, and now I have them like literally everywhere. Everywhere. So. You can put it on your body armor, your kit, yeah. you can put on a seat belt, you can put on a grab handle in your car. It goes anywhere. Yeah. Um, so. Super awesome. But yeah, back to holsters. Oh, um, what to stay away from. Ooh, what to stay away from. Oh, back back to the... the uh, what to stay away from. The, 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 the uh, Serpa holsters. Yeah, Serpa. Uh, and also, I think, if you're like the leg strap days, as far as like double banded drop leg holsters. Yeah, um, if you're looking, you need... All right, so let's go. Why, why did we have the thigh strap holsters? Mm. What was the point behind that? Okay. So originally it was to keep it to your leg for the drop leg. For That's the drop what the leg. original Correct. was, the drop To get it leg. low enough to clear your kit and your gear, right? Correct, yeah. Okay, so you, you guys were carrying a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, you had guys carrying all kinds of comms. Yeah. You had, you know... I used to just, rock a double strap, yeah, man. You, know, you had the G-Watt error of guys <laughs> yeah. out there rocking the, the, the leg straps all over the place. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, that's what they had available. Yeah. So that's what they ran. It was cutting edge yep. at the I time. I mean, you used to see the, the Serpa holsters to the chest rig. Yep. Or to the plate carriers, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, or some type of you know Kydex holster or something like that mm -hmm. to the to the plate carrier. Um, the the thigh straps. If you have to run it because it's your job, mm -hmm. and you're carrying that much stuff on you that it's in the way, and you got to you got to get your pistol low enough. Yeah. All by all means, I get it. I understand. Yeah. You have to fit your gear to um, to what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. For a living, uh, but for the most part, most of us, as far as normal concerned citizens, we can kind of cater our gear yeah. and we can run something a little more modern design mm -hmm. with some adjustability to it. Um, like the Wilder tactical, um, their QLS adapter yeah. system that they have, man, it's, the thing is absolutely fantastic. It comes straight from them yeah. with a thigh strap, um, that goes around, um, that, that pivots. So when you're moving and running, the gun actually moves with your body, yeah. which is fantastic. It, uh, it the strap doesn't the gun doesn't really move with your body, but the strap does. Yeah. So as your leg moves, the strap pivots. Okay? Yes. And the other cool thing about that is you have different heights of adjustment. Mm -hmm. So if I want to run the gun a little bit lower, I have that ability to do so. Um, but if I if I'm if I'm cool and have that a little bit more natural height, mm -hmm. I can I can bring it up. Yeah. I mean, back in the day with a double leg strap, the only cure for keeping that secure was tightening it down like a tourniquet. Like yeah. that was the only way to keep it secure. Then we started going to the mid ride and the low or like a little bit higher than a actual drop leg. And so from when I ran a leg strap, it was to prevent the holster from flapping when I was running, slapping against my thigh. So that's why I had a leg strap, but I still was used to keeping it tight because mm -hmm. of that drop leg I've been wearing mm -hmm. for so long. And then what happened was anytime I'd move my leg or I'd crouch, you'd see the holster try to flex with that leg strap yeah. on my belt. And it was just uncomfortable for a long period of time. So while a tactile's pivot thing, it was mind blowing, so simple, but mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was so much more comfortable where I don't need to run the leg strap super tight. I just got to run it tight enough where it doesn't make the, the holster flop when I run. Mm -hmm. And that pivot point, man, it makes it so much nicer. Yeah, massive difference. Yeah. Um, when it comes to you, um, other types of holsters that I generally try to stay away from or be very cautious of and make sure that I'm maintaining that holster and keeping an eye on it um, is, is types of holsters that have more wear items on them. Like leather? Like leather, okay. okay. So leather leather is going to be something that eventually breaks down over yeah. time. The more that you kind of um, sweat in it. Yeah, sweat. Sweat. Sweaty. The more you sweat in it, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's gonna get softer. Yeah. It's gonna kind of wear in a little more. So those edges, you know, for holstering and reholstering become a little bit more flexible. Mm. Same thing with your neoprene holsters. Right. Uh, if you're running anything that's like that, if you're running just a straight up 100% neoprene holster, um, unless you just have a specific role for it, something like a sticky holster. Like put I, in your pocket or something? Yeah, okay. correct. Yeah, so like a sticky holster right. is gonna be something that you put in your pocket mm -hmm. or hey, I got a pair of gym shorts on and I just kinda gotta shove the gun down there and I need something to cover it up. Right. By all means, I, I, I recommend it. The sticky yeah. holsters are very, very comfortable. They're made right here in Florida also. Mm. Um, Naples, uh, good, good company. But understand that there's going to come a time where that wears out and you're gonna need to dispose of it, okay? Mm. Uh, there's a reason why that you know that that they need to be replaced and the reason why they're they're affordable is because yeah. they're designed it's a disposable item yeah same thing a lot of times with your leather holsters they're they're more disposable items mm. understanding that kydex 
can still be disposable, a yeah. disposable item. At some point in time, this holster may wear out, but I can tell you that I've had Kydex holsters that are 100% Kydex holsters that are well over 10, 12 years old. Yeah. And they're still rocking and still, still working hmm. to this day. Yes, I may need to do some maintenance on them, adjust retention on my screws. Yeah. Um, maybe new rubber grom garments. Yeah. Grommets, grommet, gar garments. 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 New rubber yeah. garments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're rubber clothes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I do yeah. have a rubber suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For scuba diving, of course. Oh, no. Yeah. Bedroom time. What the heck? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I mean, no. as far as the screws, that's a good point. That's something also to keep an eye on. With your Kydex holsters, I've had screws walk out yep. and I've lost a clip. Um, so make sure they're lock tighted and then I indicate Did you lose mark this them. kind of clip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Glockazine. <laughs> Glockazine. Uh, yeah, but I've lost a screw before, so I indicate mark them. I take a paint marker and mark over it to see when it starts backing out. Yep. Um, but yeah, those are some things that you just kind of should keep an eye on or some things to stay away from. Or if you know a friend or family member uh, that is in that, trying to go in that direction, just kind of give them some good Definitely counsel. Definitely give them um, some info because, um, and, and I understand that budget becomes a, a, a problem when it comes to finding you know, you got a gun to buy, we got optics to buy, we got ammo to buy, we need yeah. to be able to train with it. Um, so, you know, sometimes picking up a, you know, picking up a $120 holster or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, we do have a coupon code for Safari Land. Yeah, so save, a save some money. Go to the description and use yeah. a discount code for both traditional arms and Safari Land. Yeah. Save so, some money. But, so I understand that obviously you have a budget, but if you're just looking for like an EDC holster, there's there's a lot of good companies out there that you can that you can pick up a, yeah. a good quality holster for, for a reasonable price um, that's still made out of Kydex mm -hmm. or, or some type of engineering injection molded yeah. uh, plastic holster there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones that are out there i do like classic hand molded you know hand pressed um uh kydex though yeah. still there's just a lot of craftsmanship that's into it yeah um so i, I do still prefer that and sure. the one thing that you got to do with both holsters because there's two different draw types concealed carry and outside the waistband is like we always preach train yep. make sure you train on it the holster draw is extremely important um and also if you come to our class, we we really harp on the holster draw and actually perfecting that form of drawing from the it holster. Is, it is the beginning of building uh, the proper foundation and proper fundamentals. Yeah. Uh, we get we get people that come all the time and like, oh man, I really want to, you know, what do, what do you teach in your classes? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know what, we're going to teach you how to be more proficient and, and effective and and consistent. Yeah. From from getting your pistol out and deploying it so you can get rounds on target faster. Yep. And more accurately, and that's it. And we focus very heavily on that draw stroke of building the grip. In the foundation all mm -hmm. the way through. Uh, so uh, going from here, the angle that this sits on the outside of my waistline to where this is at appendix is a slightly different draw stroke. Yeah. Okay. Um, the basis of the fundamentals of once you get to a certain step within your draw, mm -hmm. from there is the same. Mm -hmm. But clearing the garment, not rubber garment. Not rubber garments. <laughs> clearing the rubber garment. Yeah. Uh, clearing, clearing your shirt. Clearing your uh, your cover um, up and uh, getting that gun out um, effectively and consistently and, and hitting your ALS consistently. Mm. Um, by the way, add the nub, that'll help you out a lot. So. Yeah. Any final words? No, um, I know we kind of rambled there a little bit about talking about holes. We're driving conversation. Yeah, driving, driving conversation. Yeah. Comment below, let us know what you're running. Yeah. Uh, if you got a good quality holster that you really rock for, have been rocking for years and you like it and you know, and you're like, man, this thing's been solid. Sure. Comment, sh share it, comment yeah. below, because there may be somebody that's actually in there that's kind of new, that doesn't have a whole lot of experience, and they're and they're shopping for something. They're at that particular point in time where they're in the buying market. Yeah. They need something. We get the question asked all the time, but you guys can also help answer those questions for us. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we really thrive on our community, our Barrel and Hatchet community. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are becoming very knowledgeable yeah. and sharing great information back to us at the same time. Mm -hmm. So share that with the rest of the people. Yeah, and also we're we're talking about doing a Patreon account to kind of help funnel those questions. We do yep. get a lot of questions on all the social media platforms, and sometimes they get lost. So apologies to those who have asked questions and not gotten a response, but they do get buried. So we're looking at doing Patreon to kind of help funnel the people who actually have serious questions that want them answered to go to that area, and we can kind of actually go through and answer all your questions and get a little bit more personal engagement with, with the community and with you guys. So... Um, um, that's something we're talking about doing. Um, as far as our other social media accounts, on Rumble, everything that is on YouTube is also on Rumble. It's free. 
You don't have to. You don't have you don't to subscribe. Have to you don't have to pay. pay. Uh, and also, they don't limit anything. So you can go watch every video that's on YouTube, also is on Rumble, or the ones that are not on YouTube are also on Rumble. Are on Spotify, too? Yes. We have a Hatchet Cast podcast, guests yep. only, yep. and we talk about training and we should and add mindset. some of these episodes. Do you guys think we should add some of these episodes to, to Spotify? Spotify? Uh, I know you won't be able to look at the beauty of our face. In our rubber suits. In our rubber suits. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll at least get to hear our voices while you're doing your workout. You know, where you're grinding it. While you're wearing a rubber garment. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, So we've actually had a few people ask. So if you guys think uh, that would be something that you'd enjoy listening to, mm -hmm. just our conversations that we're having here, uh, we can can obviously upload. It's easy enough. We can hit the upload button. Throw it on Spotify. Throw it on Spotify. So if you think you guys would like that, we can do that too. And also any other updates about anything or also our pictures and videos on Instagram, go check out our Instagram page. Um, There's a lot of cool stuff over there too. But at the end of the day, go train, invest in yourself, and we'll see you on the next one. I need another saltine cracker. I need to wear my rubber garment. (laughs) Rubber garment. (laughs)